All right. Welcome to the wave stage, everybody. This is the quiet stage in the corner where the person presenting cannot hear all the crazy shit that's going on behind you. Hi, Zach. Thanks for being here. Everybody, that's Zach from Coordinate. Say hi to Zach, all the way here at the, main st at the wave stage. All right, awesome. Uh, my name is Chris Everly. Thank you so much for coming to hear me talk about my journey from uh, working at FANG companies to working in Web3. I've described myself as a, a recovering FANG employee, but um, truth be told, I, there's you know, some decent experiences I've had along the way. So um, I've got a few slides here for you today to kind of talk through uh, my journey and some things, that, some things that I learned. So here we go. Um, I won't take offense that these guys were like, no, fuck that. I don't want to hear about this, this Facebook stuff. Yeah, I see you. Uh, all right, right on. So chapter one, the specialists. Um, I'm going to take this all the way back to college, which for me meant a lot of time uh, playing a mud. Anybody know what a mud is? All right. I'm aging the shit out of myself here. Okay. So a mud is a, uh, like a multi-user Dungeons and Dragons thing, but basically a like a command line text-based way that you can go game with crazy people all over the world, right? And when you're playing with those crazy people, everybody has their own character. You're a mage, you're a thief, or if you were like me, you were a warrior. And when I was mudding, uh, I, would, I would go do this, you know, after class or whatever, sometimes all night. But uh, what I was actually doing was bonding with crazy people from all over the world. And I didn't know their real names. Uh, all I knew is that we got together uh, at night and we did cool shit. And we went on quests and we slayed dragons. Uh, and maybe we'd chat a little bit and get to know each other between dragon slaying. But at the end of the day, we all showed up. Uh, we all had our role. We were accepted as we were. Uh, and it was kind of a beautiful thing. And that was a very long time ago, uh, all just in text. So uh, in the end, so much of this is about people. And, and you know, spoiler alert, uh, it is really about the friends you make along the way. Um, but for me, my, my journey that you know, has taken me here to this stage today has really uh, been a lot about finding my people. So um, just to further age myself, um, this, if you're not familiar, uh, is an AOL screen. Uh, back in the day, there was this, uh, this like centralized way for you to get to the internet. Uh, and I worked at that place uh, a long time ago. But before I worked there, and like right after I was out of college, uh, I was a temp. Um, I did like, um, you know, basic web development and, and, and production work and Photoshop and stuff like that and would just go out to various clients uh, and help them with those, those webby things. And uh, it was kind of awesome, like as a young person to go out and get paid really good money, have the flexibility of being a temp, uh, and I got to go in and see how a whole bunch of different companies worked, right? You learn about how different businesses work. Uh, and you learn a lot about people, the good and the bad of people. And you learn about you know, who you like to work with. Uh, and you learn how to deal with people maybe you don't like to work with. But in the end, it was really about kind of finding the vibe that I was into. And, and much to my surprise, when I took a temp job at, at AOL a long, long time ago, uh, it was there that I found some really fucking cool people that I wanted to work with. Um, they were working on a business called AOL Shop Direct. It was run by this like 80 person company within a company that was kind of sequestered off in its own building in Herndon, Virginia. Um, and this relatively small group of people was running a $400 million a year business. Um, and we were largely left alone to just work on that $400 million a year business because it was going really well. We were transparent as fuck with data. We'd put out a, a snapshot every day of what was going on in the business, but you could go self-serve and go really deep into what was going on in the business and how it was doing. Um, and we were kind of left alone to do that. And I think a big reason why we were able to run the, that business that way was the ethos of the team. It was a flat organization. The person who was running it was all about access to the person who knew what was going on. So he didn't want to talk to the manager of the manager of the person who actually built something. He's like, I want to talk to the builder. And so for me coming in to, you know, to work at a big company, which you know, back then was uh, my first time at a big company, it was kind of this awesome opportunity to see how something was built and learn how, you know, when people actually, you know, trust one another to just go off and do cool things, big things can, can be done. So I, I stayed there for a long time. Um, we'll fast forward a bit to autonomy in a centralized world. Um, 
you know, I mentioned a big part of what like made that AOL job cool, which I know I just at a at a Web3 conference in 2022 just talked about AOL being cool. But back in the day, it was. And that team was really freaking cool to work on because we were trusted to just go get shit done. Um, years later, I, I went to a different place um, and, and found a lot of people who were just trusted to get shit done. So this is Hacker Square, uh, Hacker Square at, uh, at Facebook headquarters in Menlo Park, California, or I guess now it's Meta or whatever. But um, so I went to work at Facebook in 2014 and I, I joined to help uh, build out a team of people to bring products and features that were designed for content creators to the world. So back, back in that day, um, everybody had the same version of Facebook or Instagram. There was nothing special for creators. There were no special features for people trying to reach tons of people. Uh, influencer wasn't a bad word. It didn't mean like some vapid idiot trying to whatever, shill their shit to you. There actually were, you know, creators trying to create things and, you know, yada, yada, yada. But um, there was a real opportunity. And what attracted me to working at Facebook was the opportunity to build something like that to connect people to content. And as a, as a builder, I, I went in and put together, a, uh, when I first started, we put together a proposal, me and, and a few other great people, um, a proposal to stand up a team to do all this stuff, this sort of mix of uh, product marketing and client services and ops and support. And we put together a proposal and said, hey, we can stand up a team that can bring this stuff to the whole world, um, all different kinds of content verticals, you know, creators uh, of various sizes in major markets all around the world. And we need X, X amount of dollars and we need a year. And the response that I got back was, okay, cool, you've got your money and you've got six months, let's go. Um, and we were trusted to just go do that at this, big, at this big company with all these checks and balances and stuff. But back then, we were trusted to just fucking go. And it was one of the best experiences of my career. I got to like, stand up teams really quickly in different spots of, around the world. I got to learn the nuance of language and culture that uh, affects the way that you know, the content is created and the difference between bringing content that's you know, uh, about music or about sports or, or what have you. Um, and it was an amazing opportunity, one that I, that I wouldn't trade for anything. And I think it was because at that point in time, Facebook was about moving fast and breaking things, right? Which, you know, there are worse, there are worse things, to, things to live by. Um, I'm gonna take a quick drink of water. So during my tenure, um, I was at this meeting uh, where Zuck got up on stage and said, hey everybody, so check this out. We're gonna move, instead of like move fast and break things, we're gonna do move fast with stable infra, which if you haven't been to sadtrombone.com, Check it out. Actually, it's a real thing. You just go to sadtrombone.com and you hit, I think it's like, yes. And it's like, wah, 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 wah. Um, which, you know, that was, a, that was a signal of the sadtrombone.com that Facebook became to me as, a, as an employee. Because it wasn't a, an overnight shift, but it was the beginning of a shift into less autonomy, less ability to just go build cool shit and put it out there. Um, and more, you know, stable infra, which is not sexy. Uh, at the same time, it's not illogical, right, for a massive company like that to, uh, you know, on the hook to deliver value to shareholders, on the hook with a lot of people's, uh, well, data and other things like that, um, uh, to need to have stable infra. So it, didn't, it wasn't necessarily a bad business decision, but as somebody working there, uh, kind of a bummer. Uh, fortunately, in 2017, um, enter the DAO, which for me was, a, you know, a discovery of... Uh, of crypto, of, uh, of all things, uh, we didn't call it Web3, but of all this crazy shit that was going on here. And my brother-in-law um, was, and, and still is to this day, like crazy crypto evangelist and got me really excited about Ethereum. Um, got me sort of the basics of, a basic understanding of how blockchains worked, how Ethereum worked, and how all this crazy shit could be built on top of it, and how nobody was there to tell you what to do and how everything that you did was transparent and immutable. And in, and in all of this stuff was something that got me really, really excited. And so I bought this uh, dual GPU gaming tower. I set it up as an ETH miner. I did not make much money from said ETH miner, but the, for me, the process of getting to the command line and understanding uh, Ethereum in that way just unlocked like, all this stuff in my, in my mind. And so I left, uh, I left my job at Facebook. 
um, to go to go full time into crypto in, in 2017, um, and did that for a couple of years. This is another like yada 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 part of the presentation just because we are limited on time, but uh, happy to expand on that if anybody wants to go deeper into sort of my my first couple of years in, in crypto. But um, at the end of the day, uh, it was about this this moment, right? And the you know after seeing like too big to, uh, too big to fail banks um, and just sort of feeling limited to build only on top of legacy systems to be able to build you know only in ways that you're allowed to in, in, in legacy world it was really appealing to me to see people back then at least starting to build things uh, in, a, in a different way however um, in 2019 in the bear market which some of you I'm sure were around for um, things got a little bit dire. Things for this guy were a little financially tough. And so I started a, a, a job hunt. And my ideal would have been to, to stay working full time in, in crypto and find a gig in crypto, but I didn't find a great one. Um, but a kind of uh, serendipitous thing happened, which is that my friend Matthias, uh, he encouraged me to make a resume that was just one page. Um, and as you've gathered from, from these slides, I've, I've had a couple of jobs. I've been around the block a couple of times. A one-page resume is pretty tough. And you know, when you're job hunting, you have like 10 different versions of your resume, right, for different kinds of jobs or different size companies. But my buddy Matthias said, just make a one-pager and just focus on the work that you are most proud of, the things that you had the most fun doing, the teams that you were most stoked to be a part of. And so I did that. Um, and what I found was that the, the common thread in, in that work that I was most proud of was about connecting people to things that, that brought them joy and about you know, global growth and that sort of art, art science collision of you know, bringing things to people, people around the world. And um, in, in pretty quick fashion, that, um, that resume actually brought me to a company called Netflix. And so um, I'm, the, you know, I'm the guy that, that left full-time crypto to go work uh, at Netflix in, in 2019. Um, and it was kind of an awesome opportunity. It was like when I had put together that resume, um, so much of it led to working on, on culture and uh, sorry uh, on content uh, and to seeking a culture that kind of matched with my values. And um, uh, you know, I, I found one in, in, in Netflix. I was going to say I thought I found one. I did find one in, in Netflix. I think Netflix is a very well-intentioned company. And as far as big companies, I think if you got to work for one, I would say it's one of the best ones to work for um, that, that I'm aware of. But um, if you look at some of the core, the core tenets of Netflix culture, it might actually sound more like Web3, right? Avoid rules, people over process, context not control, freedom and responsibility. The whole idea is to em empower people and trust them to just go off and do shit and not slow them down with a lot of red tape and layers and all those kinds of things. So in, in theory, Kind of, a, kind of an, an amazing system. In practice, you run into some of the same kinds of things that Facebook ran into, right? And the move fast with stable infra, uh, you know, phase in their existence. Where, at the end of the day, when you're a large, uh, a large corporation with obligations to stockholders, like, you need to have some level of control. Um, and so, I, I went to work there. It was a great job. I was running globalization, so um, all that art science collision stuff, and and uh, and pretty fantastic. But um, at the end of the day, Netflix, as many companies are, are limited by hierarchy. Your ability to operate with context, not control, uh, freedom and responsibility is only as good as your part of the organization. It's limited by your manager. Uh, if your manager is a command and control kind of person, then in a meta kind of way, they are empowered to run their part of the organization with command and control. And so between those kinds of dynamics and the fact that I spent an uh, inordinate amount of my time managing up and kind of shuttling information back and forth between groups, um, I left. Um, but I left because um, I discovered something called Yearn Finance. And this is not the Yearn Finance shill, shill part of the, the presentation. However, um, I started talking to uh, a, a guy that goes by the name of Tracheopteryx um, a while back, a little over, little over a year ago. We met through a, through a common friend and just started talking not about DeFi, not about... Uh, yield, not about strategies, but about people and organizations and how people are happiest and most fulfilled and how people can rally together um, and build most anything. And if they are, if they are aligned people that are empowered and, uh, and trusted and have autonomy, that they can just go get cool shit done. And what I found in talking to Trake, I found in talking to 
every other person that I met on the Yearn team. And I saw this opportunity to live many of the things that I had lived in some pockets of my career before, but either I saw companies grow too big, um, then they outgrew those things and couldn't be that nimble anymore, or just that were kind of too good to be true, like where you just really can't operate that way in a big, certainly in a big public company. Um, and so I, I now I, I help out at Yearn, and I think that's the other thing too, I could do a whole other talk on. Over my career, you know, I got very excited for a long period of time about growing my career and having big titles and having promotions and all those things, and I've had all of them. I've been a VP and an SVP and a CMO, and now I'm a helper, a contributor, and it's fucking awesome. I, like, I used to have like, a big corner office and a big global team, and I had, I had a, a good time. Thank you, doggy. Um, I just got heckled from the back of the room. Um, but I, you know, I had great times in those jobs, but I promise you none of it compares to just being a helper, being a contributor. Um, running short on time, so I'm gonna jump into this. So um, at the end of the day, what does this all come down to and, and how can you find your happy place and why did I just spend 17 minutes talking about my, uh, my past? Because at the end of the day, what I was looking for was there all along, right? It was built up from the experiences that I'd had, good and bad, along the way, and so they came down to these things. Number one, find your people. If you're most attracted to the opportunity to go make money, probably not gonna be a good fit in the long run. Money's great, but at the end of the day, it's who you're working with, what they're all about, um, and are these people that you feel like you can lock arms with and go, you know, go conquer the world with? Two, just jump in. Um, the whole idea of not having a boss is fantastic and sounds great, right? However, there's a certain amount of overhead that goes into telling people what to do, checking in with them to make sure that they did it, giving them feedback on it, and all those kinds of things. Like there are valuable aspects to having a boss. Um, and I promise you that if you just jump in and share what you're doing and hold yourself accountable, you can go way further, way faster. But you gotta just do it and you gotta find it within yourself because nobody in, in Web3 will tell you what to do, um, but they will give you help uh, if you ask. So embrace autonomy with transparency, right? Share what you're working on, share what you're doing, forget about managing up, forget about delivering only good news, forget about posturing for the next promotion or protecting information, or all the things we were taught to do in big, in big companies. Just share what you're working on and how it's going and where you're stuck, right? And I, I promise you, because I have lived this, the people that you will find uh, drawn to you like magnets are the best people in the world for you to work with. Um, and that, lastly, pick your focus area, right? All the way back to the mud, the mage, the cleric, the thief, the warrior, right? Pick your focus area. You will never be fully caught up on what's going on in, in Web3. You, you will never, there is no inbox zero in Web3, right? There's always more going on than you can possibly keep up with. So be a fucking warrior, pick your spot, go in, go deep, be yourself, find your happy place. Thank you very much. Uh, presentation over, not game over, the beginning of the journey. I'm Chris Everly, get in touch, uh, at DeFi Ginger on Twitter, Chris at Defiant LLC. Thank you very much.